In this lecture, I want to spend some time talking about inheritance and uh, how it works in C++, uh, and again, focusing on some of the differences between C++ and Java. The example that I want to use is uh, of a, an ellipse class, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, implement basically this. So we have uh, an ellipse class, and then I'm going to create as a subclass a circle class um, that uh, inherits uh, you know, certain aspects of the ellipse. Okay, so uh, to do this, um, uh, the first thing that I need to do is, well, let's first uh, take a look at uh, the ellipse class. And uh, let me do this by splitting the window um, here. So we have, uh, let's see if this works right. Okay, so we have the um, we have the header file on the right hand side and the uh, implementation, the source file on the left hand side. And uh, uh, basically, the uh, constructor for this takes the uh, the four uh, points uh, that make up the focal um, points of the ellipse. So going back to my picture here, uh, each of these is a focal point. Uh, it has uh, both an x and a y axis, or sorry, an x and a y coordinate. Uh, and then uh, the um, major axis is the, uh, the length uh, between the, uh, the major uh, portion of the ellipse, and then the minor axis is the, the other portion there, or the other part there. Um, so that's what we have here for the, um, for the inputs. And then uh, we can set the focal points. Uh, we can set the major and minor. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't implement the uh, um, the getters for this. Just the just the setters. And of course, you know, I could simply just uh, use the, uh, the generate getters and setters for that. But it's not actually necessary here for this uh, for this particular example. Uh, or actually. Now let's go ahead and generate them. I think there might be a need for them. So, oh, I need to, uh, I need to select a class and generate getters and setters. And um, hmm, it doesn't show all of them. Let's see. So I wonder if I need to. Put these up into different <clears throat> statements in order for it to uh, recognize it. So let's do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's select everything and go ahead and just generate it. Okay, and then. Uh, <clears throat> when um, uh, we may need those for the uh, for the subclasses, and, and I'm sure that we could. Uh, I, well, we'll see that when we, uh, when we go to implement it. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, what I want to do now is uh, I want to implement the circle class as a subclass of ellipse, um, and in the circle class, uh, the uh, uh, the way that it works is that the um, the focal points are equal to the same point, um, and then the major and the minor axis are actually equivalents, and the, those will both make up the diameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this class. Um, first, save ellipse and. So let's add a new class called circle. And the base class is ellipse. <clears throat> and let's see what this does for us when we generate this. So let me move circle over here. Okay, so here uh, 
it, we've in, inherited from um, the public portion of Ellipse. Um, and actually, since we're using the same namespace, I can remove the scoping identifier here. Just have it um, inherit from Ellipse. Um, and uh, what we're going to have is uh, we're going to have a constructor that is going to um, that's going to take the same number of uh, param well actually it's just going to take parameters for for the x and y and for the diameter and <clears throat> let's do it this way let's generate uh, let's implement a method I uh, didn't find it. Let's see. Select this. Select the method. And select that. So it's generated my, uh, uh, my signature over in the source file. And uh, what I'm going to do here is <coughs> in the constructor. I'm going to use the, um, the superclasses constructor for implementing the, um, or for storing, uh, and using the superclass to store the, the data for, uh, for this particular class. Okay, so um, here I'm going to say ellipse, ellipse. Ah. And then I'm going to pass the parameters for the constructor. So again, in, in a circle, the, the major the focal points are the same. So I'm going to pass x and y twice, and then the diameter let's see here. Diameter is the same. So the major and the, the minor focal points, uh, so the major and the minor axes are uh, the same in um, in a circle. Okay, so all of that then is being stored in the um, uh, in the superclass, and then we don't actually need to do anything else for the for the subclass for circle uh, because everything is being handled by um, the ellipse. Um, and there are, of course, other things that we could do um, with uh, this subclass. Um, I could implement, uh, for instance, uh, uh, a method for getting the diameter. Um, so let's do that. Uh, so in the uh, in this <coughs> superclass, uh, we have get major and get minor in the circle class. Um, we will have a um, get diameter. And this is simply going to be, uh, or simply just going to return the result of uh, getting the, um, uh, the major or the minor for the, uh, for the superclass um, and the superclass definition. So let's implement the method. I'm just lazy here. I don't need to generate these in this way, but um, one of the things that's kind of nice about Eclipse here is that uh, if you define all of your uh, all of your signatures first, you can just generate everything um, essentially on the fly. Okay, so uh, let's see. Did it actually add it? Oh, I'm on the wrong Wrong definition. So here it is. It's uh, get diameter, and so in the uh, um, in the implementation of this method, I'm simply going to call the superclasses um, method for getting the major. So I'm going to return ellipse get major uh, for that. Um, and then I could also do things like you know get the get the center point the x and the y 
so I'm going to do that as well. So get int get x int get y and again I'm just going to generate these using Eclipse. That oops, I only did one. I need both. Okay. All right, so same deal here. Return groups. Get uh, let's see, we can get x0. Get y0. Okay, so anyway, so that's the, that's the basics of that implementation for this, uh, um, for this subclass. Let's actually look at this uh, in action. Um, let's uh, create a circle object. <clears throat> and let's print it. You see that print. something. Where's my error? Oh, I forgot to include H here. Um, oh, I'm missing diameter on this. Okay, so now I'm printing out the, the data for the ellipse, and then also data for a circle. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's essentially the basics of, of inheritance uh, within C++. Um, some minor differences here between uh, how it looks in, um, in Java and in C++. Uh, we're specifying here that uh, that we're inheriting from ellipse. Uh, in Java, this would be replaced with extends. Uh, there is, of course, no extends keyword in C++. It's specified with the colon. Um, and then in calling the superclasses constructor, um, here we do that um, by providing the colon. In Java, we would use the super uh, method uh, to do that. Uh, another thing I want to mention here is that um, in C++, whenever uh, we want to have a class override a method in the superclass, we have to use the virtual method, or sorry, the virtual keyword. And uh, let's do that here. Let's, uh, in the print method for, uh, for ellipse, let's do this, say ellipse, and then let's put a line underneath this, and then uh, we're going to override this in the subclass. Uh, by doing the following, let's uh, let's do it this way. Let's void circle print, and so we will 
print circle. Put our line in here. And then let's call the superclasses version of this. Actually, I need to make sure I include IO stream. Let's do uh, uh, let's do ellipse print. Okay. So now when we print this uh, here, we should see for the circle we should see circle, then ellipse, and then the data. Uh, so let's do this. I forgot to uh, forgot to find the print method. Okay. Okay. So uh, here we see it. Uh, the first one was the ellipse, and then for the circle, it prints. It does the specialized part, which is to say it's a circle, and then it also prints the ellipse part. Uh, so it's making a call to the superclasses constructor. Uh, sorry, the superclasses version of print. Okay. So anyway, that's um, that's the basics of inheritance. Uh, we can obviously do a, a lot of really interesting things with inheritance, as you uh, have seen probably in. in uh, earlier courses, um, we will make extensive use of inheritance as we go through this course uh, because we'll see that a lot of the data structures that we use um, have uh, uh, have a nice uh, hierarchy of behavior and properties that uh, we'll be able to take advantage of. Okay, so anyway, that concludes this lecture.